There are so many small things to think about when starting a small business. It can be really overwhelming. So today I want to share with you how I design, package and sell my products. So hopefully it can help you and give you some inspiration. Of course, the first thing that you need to think about is starting with a design. My usual go-to is Pinterest. I love going to Pinterest to look for inspiration and motivation. I usually start with around five to 10 photos and from there, I will kind of just start sketching things out and trying to see what kind of designs stick and what kind of things I want to go with. Just kind of get the creative juices flowing, you know? It's important to mention that when you're designing products, keep your target audience in mind and what kind of things they would like. This means you'll make the most efficient designs for your shop. There's been a lot of times when I've tried to design things and I really liked the design, but it didn't really fit with my target audience and therefore they didn't sell well. So it's really important to think about what your target audience for your shop is gonna like. After designing my products, it is then time to go on to the production phase. This section can go many ways depending on what products you're trying to make, but I will show you everything that I do to make my products, with tips of course. When I buy things like keychains and pins, I usually go to manufacturers. I have no way of making these at home. And there are plenty of choices for manufacturers out there. I usually just type in things like keychain manufacturer and something will come up. It's important to do your research and read reviews into different manufacturers so you can find the best one for you. The ones that I use right now are Sticker Mule, who are really great. They have a lot of cheap items and products and their turnaround is very quick. And I'm also currently trying Vogue Grace. I currently can't give an opinion on them right now as I haven't received their products just yet, but they look amazing and they have a lot of more options in Sticker Mule in terms of little touches such as adding glitter to your keychains or adding charms to your keychains. In terms of prints and bookmarks, I make those myself. To do this, I need to use my Epson printer along with the Epson paper that I have. My Epson printer is the XP970 version and the paper is the Epson matte archival paper. Making prints is really easy, but of course it can be overwhelming with how many settings you have to choose from. So here are the settings that I use. First of all, you want to make sure that your image is selected in the CMYK color. This will give you the best possible color output for your prints. And then when you come over to the print settings, first thing that I do is go to paper quality and I click photo paper semi gloss and of course make sure color is also selected. Most of my prints currently are A5, therefore I usually print with borderless off because I currently cannot do borderless printing on A5 paper. But this just depends on what printer you have. And then for the output quality, I make sure it is high quality because you want the best possible quality for your prints. And that is it. I usually check these settings every single time that I print because I just want to make sure that everything is right. There's nothing worse than printing a product and then realizing that you had the wrong settings on it and now you've just wasted a piece of paper and some ink. <laughs> these print settings are exactly the same that I use for my bookmark. For bookmarks, I add them onto an A4 page in Photoshop. Sometimes it requires me adjusting them a little bit as well. And then once they are all printed out, I cut them out using a guillotine. To make them better quality, I like laminate them first and I got this laminator from Amazon for £20. I laminate them and then I cut them and sometimes I laminate them again if I really feel like I need to. Sometimes cutting them after they've been laminated makes the lamination come up just a little bit so you can laminate it again if you need to. I also like to cut the corners using a corner punch just because I think the rounded corners are such a small detail but they make such a big difference. I think they make bookmarks look so much cuter so it's just a really nice touch to add. And now for the packaging. Something that I learned recently is packaging makes so much difference. First of all, I'm going to show you how I make backing cards for my pins. To get the right sizes, I just kind of put them on a piece of paper and measured it out with a ruler. Just kind of estimated how big they should be. Honestly, it took a lot of guessing. I don't know if there's a better way, but this works for me. It honestly didn't take up that much time. So for the backing pins, I do the same thing that I do for my bookmarks. I just kind of put them all onto an A4 piece of paper in Photoshop and I just add as many as I can fit on and then I print them out. Just like the bookmarks, I also laminate them. I can't just use paper and then cut and stick the pins onto it. It would be way too thin. Adding lamination makes the backing cards feel like cardboard without me actually having to buy card. So that's another really handy use for a laminator if you are thinking about getting one. And here's a little small tip. Try to make the design of the 
the backing cards relevant to your products. Backing cards are so important. They make such a difference. They add such a professional and cute look to all of your products. I highly recommend learning how to make backing cards. And look how cute they are. I absolutely love these backing cards. They have made such a big difference to my packaging and how to my pins. I also make backing cards for my keychains as well and I'm planning to do them for die cut stickers. Most of my die cut stickers and keychains just go into cellophane bags and it really just gives it a more professional look to have something in the bag with the keychains. It kind of makes it look a lot more brighter and more professional. It's just a really nice simple touch to add and if they're going in cellophane bags you don't need to laminate these either and they just look so much cuter with the backing cards on. As for other packaging materials I have, these cute blue bubble mailers are my favorite favorite things. I absolutely adore them. It fits so well with my brand and I got these off Amazon as well. One thing I do recommend is buying different sizes of packaging. I also make labels with the Munbian printer. This can be used for both laser printing out designs and thank you stickers and it can also be used for shipping labels so it is really handy and I highly recommend looking into one. I also like to wrap my stuff up in white tissue paper and I put the label on top and boom! <laughs> so cute! Oh, and don't forget a thank you card. You want to show your customers that you are appreciating them. I used to print off my own thank you cards, but I can't print double-sided, so I ended up buying these new cards from Vistaprint. And there we go, an order that is all ready and packed so adorably, ready to be sent to the customer. That is my process from start to finish. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And please check out my last video that I did where I vlogged my first ever market experience as a small business. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!